There we go. Looking back down after going airborne for the first time, watching as the buildings get smaller and smaller, knowing that I'm going to be going to the final frontier further north. But before I go straight over to that place, I have to go through a couple of other plane terminals and spend another day trying to catch the next plane. Well, that's not the only thing that I'm going to be doing. What I'm about to share with you is my experience to this place and how everything went. So, this is how the story goes. Talking about being on the plane for the first time, and after a couple of tedious hours later, here we are, about to head over to Anchorage, Alaska, as one of the first stops in order to get to the next stop. So, let's check out this view here. Let's skip everything here because this is taking too long. Also. I wanted to bring up a quick history lesson. As much as there's so much history that I'm going to have to cut out due to the video not being that long, I'm going to have to lay it out through parts here and there. So, almost there. And, if anything, this whole trip is going to take almost two days to get over here. We're just going to skip a lot of things here and get to the bottom of this or get straight to the point. Aside from the history of the Russian exploration during the 1800s where it was the center for trade between Russians and the natives, mostly I'm going to focus more on the gold rush which took place in 1897 where a few people lived in Valdez area until the winter of 1897 when gold seekers came to Valdez to follow the all-American route over the Valdez glaciers. Well, definitely not in the desert anymore. Now, let's go and check out the rest of the place. Some plan to prospect in the Copper River Bastion Others plan to search everywhere else. The route was based on an inaccurate description by the U.S. Army where the route was advertised all over the continental U.S. as an established pre-existing trail. Man. Some of these places I don't normally get to see. However, this is just one of those those new ones that I am going to witness so I gotta record every last moment of it that I can so we are only about a few moments to checking out this place that I'm going to be exploring as you can see it has bunnies yep the place I'm gonna be staying at quite some view here Well, here we are, in the one place called La Alaska, the final frontier. Man, some place here. Oh man. Total fog, or the clouds are just nearby. 
No stops, no rest. No stops. <laughs> 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 the the I decided to go out for a late night walk because I had a break and we're going to go check out this uh, place using my camera's, camera's uh, smartphone. Definitely not the best of quality but this is all I have. Someone's having a party tonight. Man, you want to know the scary part? Anyone can disappear in places like these. So, from what I've heard, there's been a couple of people that have disappeared, but I'm not sure how, if who or how, but I guess it just happens. Well... For a town like this, around this time, this late at night, it can really get really lonely. But then, what is there to do here in a place like this? Well... I'm just gonna go get some snacks. Well, as much as I'd like to walk around some more and tell you more about my experience, I'll just let the video roll and make the film speak for itself. Miners went to Valdez and find no town and no real trail. A tent city sprung up at the head of the bay. Thus, Valdez was formed. 4,000 came through Valdez that year. Some of them stayed on shores to set up shops and other businesses. Others dragged themselves and their gear up over the glaciers. The trip over the glaciers was a difficult one and some people died in the attempt. Snow slides, snow blindness, and extreme physical challenges just to name a few. This looks like the, at any moment anyone can just pop out of nowhere and start a scene. But then, talking about Alaska, especially these remote parts of the state. Here we are at the loading bays or the docks where the ships or boats are usually parked. So here we are, the next day walking towards that mountain to check out what else there is. And I'm gonna do a little adventure here. Now, heading towards the destination. This is the one place where you really gotta watch out for. Even if it's not the clearest, still. Imagine having to walk all the way here in order to get from one place to another. Definitely some view, but what this is nothing compared to where we're going. Bears have been seen in this area. Unfortunately, I couldn't take a picture of them. Supplies of goods had to be transported on people pool sleds as many as 20 trips back and forth were needed in order to get the necessary years worth of supplies across. That winter of 1898 and 99 was long and difficult. Side note for you guys, it's like this almost every day. 
Also, a little fun fact. Did you know that some of these salmon that fish here, uh, the majority of the time, it's because they usually get stuck at some of those rocks. They may be able to swim on shallow waters, but they won't be able to survive what they're about to face. Unfortunately, they don't have the brain power to realize where they're heading. They're definitely not edible when they're stuck here. Remember, don't go to sh get fish from shallow waters. Literally. That's why we have safety signs. Now we're going to climb up this place. Here we are at the cafeteria, uh, the place where I used to work. It's definitely a packed place since everyone is hungry from work. And yet we only have less than 30 minutes to finish before having to go ahead to the plant again. Uh. Normally, this is where I head over in order to get to my workplace. And we only got a very short amount of time to wear these things. Now to get ready. It's usually not this uh, empty. But this is just how it looks like from the inside. Because right now, I'm on cleaning duty and this place needs to be kept clean. So, this is just, uh, just a setup here. These, uh, pl these spots would be filled with people. However, it's cleaning duty, so this is... This is what we get so far. As we are processing the fish in those machines, they just go and... Talking about a mass production of fish. One time... I've caught some of these fish with parasites intact as I was cutting them. Sometimes it makes me wonder if they even bother to check these fishes, even though they've been fished out of out of certain place spots that they probably shouldn't be fishing, but I wouldn't be eating some of these it, from what I have seen. It is no wonder why some 90% or so, based on some statistics of Americans, suffer from parasites. Anyhow, this is pretty much what I have to deal with.
On March 27, 1964, also known as Good Friday, at 5.30 in the evening, an earthquake lasting over four minutes at a magnitude of 9.2, just 45 miles of west of Valdez. The quake triggered an underwater landslide, which in turn created several tremendous waves. In all of Alaska, or that area, 144 people died as a result of the earthquake. So, in 1967, the town had to be relocated four miles east of the original site. The ground raised, and 52 buildings were moved, and the other structures were burnt. Go shopping. This is the same docks during the daytime. By the way, this is the spot where the fisherman shows off their fish. Or this seems to be the whole theme about this video. Definitely a nice sunny day for a place that is normally foggy and cloudy all the time. You know, I don't usually record myself, or at least having this camera, or f potato like phone pointing at me like this, but I guess this is just one of those times where I'm probably not going to be able to do this again. But anyways, I'm just uh, walking around town at the moment, as you can tell. There's the docks. So, right now I'm just gonna go to a store and see if I can buy some stuff or something that I'm going to need. Now, I'm just gonna skip right along. Supposedly, there was some event going on. Safeway. The only way. Chips. Only $7.29 each. Expensive, ain't it? Now to head out. Now heading back to the harbor. Or at least around there. You know, just for the sake of it, I'm going to go take some pictures. There has definitely been life on this spot. Someone's been here. And someone already camped here. And took the time to stack all these rocks. Then, several other days later, back to the weather that we normally have here. And it's about to rain soon. In 1973, thousands of people moved to Valley to be a part of the construction boom. The town's population went up to 8,000 people, then settled at 3,500 by January of 1989. Originally, I had an idea of getting a ship. Or it makes me want to get one for myself. Great, 
now it started to rain. Well, I better look around before I get more soaked. It may look like a house, but it's actually not. Oh, uh, spoiler alert, that's the hotel where I stayed. So on March 24th of that year, the tanker Exxon Valdez, approximately 25 miles outside of town, caused the largest oil spill in North American history. Thousands of birds, sea otters, and other wildlife died, and hundreds of miles of beach were oiled. Crews work all that summer and fall into the next year, cleaned up the beaches and rescued animals. So, s so yeah, that's definitely a tough history it had. Let's see if I can find a path somewhere here. Really? Well, heading back. Nothing there. And now back to this place again. Also, I kind of skipped that part when I was heading up because that was actually a separate day. This is a completely different uh, day after some weeks later. As you can see, that is a very powerful waterfall. Now to continue climbing up. And have my trusty shovel to help me out here while I'm digging for a few things. See if I can find some gold. Well, oh shoot, that was great. My phone. Totally the most derp move I've ever made. But at least we get to enjoy the sky while we're at it. Although it's been... S Can't stop there. Gotta keep moving. Now to get these branches out of the way. I just roll down that waterfall. 
falling to my death. All so I can watch this view. And this is just a perspective to see how far the waterfall goes. Also, one last stop. It's a shame that the camera quality is not that clear, but there's actually some kind of porcupine. My conclusion to working to this place... My conclusion to working at this place. A beaver. It's like literally looking at me. Ooh. I'm sorry, man. He's trying to get hot. Oh, what the fuck? That might actually be a fucking... This place sucks the living life out of me. And then... This is where I went to stay. At that hotel that I just showed you. As I got my breakfast, look around, watching some artwork, and checking out this place one last time. Yeah, that exists. Believe it or not, that's a stripper pole in there. Well, I have to go and leave. As much as I'd like to go look for that gold, I couldn't stay in Alaska or even afford to any longer, so I was left with no other choice but to head back home. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I also want to give a shout out to a friend, or at least a person I've met. Her name is Star. If you are listening to this, I just wanted to say that it sucks that you had to leave soon. All because of a stalker <laughs> that ruined it for you. But I guess you had your reasons. And it's a shame that your friend had to also leave much sooner. Hopefully you'll be able to explore more places and travel across the country like you said you wanted to do and do stuff. And I wish you both the best of luck. And Gina met after sitting across the table at lunch. And if she does found the video, I wanted to say that if you're listening, I kind of wish I got to know you better. Hopefully you're doing good on your end, despite not really getting to hang out so much because of so many hours of work, making it nearly impossible to start a proper conversation. It was nice knowing you. Anyways, I'm gonna have to stop here and, and await for my next adventure. Till then, this is LR7 logging out. Bunny. Bunny.